And that badge was the woman of my dreams. A woman who could be treated and talked to in awful ways for eight hours a day at work and could still come home and laugh and be so kind-hearted. I feel an emptiness without her here, but I will forever be thankful for the purest love she gave me. On August 10th, 2022, Richmond Police Department, K-9 Officer Sierra Burton answered her final call. K-9 Officer Sierra Burton succumbed to her injuries on September 18th, 2022. K-9 Officer Sierra Burton, K-9-2 of the Richmond Police Department, is 1042. A final farewell to an officer loved by her community far and wide. Welcome to Inside Indy, I'm Megan Shin. An emotional final journey for Richmond K-9 officer Sierra Burton. Fellow officers escorting her from Richmond to her final resting place here in Indianapolis. She'll be buried in the Heroes of Public Safety section at Crown Hill Cemetery. We've been following every step of today's journey from the start. WRTV's Caitlin Kendall was at the funeral. She joins us now with the final farewells given by her friends and family. Inside Richmond High School, hundreds of brothers and sisters in blue, family, friends, even strangers coming to pay their respects to an officer who laid it all on the line. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Sierra was the strongest woman I've ever known, and she recently just showed the world just how strong she was. I was honored to work beside you, and I was honored to be your bonus mom. Who am found was blind, but now I see. Sierra, your end of watch your 1042 is complete here on earth. However, I am certain you have already marked yourself in service 1041, beginning your tour of duty as heaven's newest guardian angel. Our first date was at Kings Island and it was one of the hottest days of the year. The feels like temperature was over a hundred. And I remember my brother saying, hopefully you like her because that'll be one long, awkward date. <laughs> we spent eight hours together and still didn't want to leave. The connection was instant. I once was lost, but now We will continue to love and care for baby mama. So please watch over us and rest easy, sweet girl. I love you. 
Both her family and friends saying that Officer Sierra Burton wanted to become a canine officer, and they're grateful that she got an opportunity to accomplish that goal. Working for you in Richmond, Caitlin Kendall, WRTV. The community here in the city of Richmond and surrounding areas came out in full force, and they came out for one reason, to show their support for fallen canine officer Sierra Burton. I did not know her. I'll be honest about it. As soon as we heard the news, her and I both just scrambled and we felt we needed to do everything we could. It's a call felt community wide. We're going to be here for your family. We're going to be here for our community. One that brought countless neighbors, some old, some young, to the sidewalk in front of the Richmond Police Department. It helps Richmond. They have support from the whole state. The community came out to say their final goodbye to a hometown hero who died in the line of duty at just 28 years old. Officer Sierra Burton. We need more officers like Sierra Burton that care. And Mr. God, and watching our funeral service on here is just very, very emotional. As the moments drew closer to Officer Burton's final 1042 call, the crowd grew. Many stood in the deafening silence with a flag in their hand, hand over their heart, and tears down their face. Richmond K92. Richmond K92. While Richmond K92 has completed her final call, this community wants the world to know her memory will live on. Thank you for your service, Sierra. Your bravery and your commitment to your department and your profession. This is another way of saying thank you for everything that you've done for us. It's our time now to thank you for what you have done. She has gone home now for the final time. K-9, Officer Sierra Burton, K-9-2 of the Richmond Police Department. It's 1042. In Richmond, Nikki Dementry, WRTV. You can find our complete coverage of services for Officer Burton up right now on WRTV.com. We also have the event streaming now. Just download the WRTV app wherever you stream. We want to let you know we are following a developing story out of Lafayette. At least one person was shot at the Subaru plant and the suspect is dead. Second shift at the facility has been canceled. We know that Lafayette police responded to the scene just off of State Road 38 near I-65 just before 5 o'clock. We're working to find out more details now. And you can find updates online and an in-depth report on WRTV News at 11. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Indy. When it comes to drug rehabilitation and recovery, one size does not fit all. That's a message from a group on a nationwide tour hoping to save lives and change the stigma around addiction. WRTV's Adam Shooms caught up with the mobilized recovery bus as it made a stop at a local organization helping Indianapolis women with their own recovery journeys. There is something empowering that is happening inside of the Dove Recovery House for women. They all live in-house. We are completely inpatient treatment. The Recovery House is the largest housing program for women in Marion County serving around 40 a night. Each one of them have their own story to tell. I stayed in the dark a really long time because I thought that no one cared if I ever found help, but people do care. One of those people who care is peer recovery case manager Christy Sheen. Day in and day out for nearly the last three years, she helps guide women throughout their journey through recovery. I get to see the seeds that were planted here at this you know, organization grow and change their lives later on and what that can look like for them. It's pretty amazing. When you look at that, what, what goes through what? Um, a little bit of pride, a little bit of sadness for the person who is on the left who was so lost. Now before and after picture of Christy sits along the wall of the Dove Recovery House. She was a resident here on two different occasions. I was an angry person and I was a hurting person. And when I came here, those are the only things I could feel. 
and Dove House kind of helped me weed out the bad feelings so I could also find out that there was joy in life. You can say Christy has made a 180 degree turnaround and he's using her pain and struggles to make sure these women can and will do the same. The average stay in the recovery house is about eight and a half months. My story is a lot like other women's story. I was abused. I had a lot of pain. I didn't know who I was. And when I came to Dove House, I was able to sort through all of that and find the amazing woman that lived within me. Working for you. Just reach out. Just ask for help. Adam Shumes, WRTV. In health news, there's a new warning for women who conceive frozen embryos. New research shows they're at a higher risk for pregnancy complications. Researchers found women who conceived through IVF by using frozen embryos were 74% more likely to develop a hypertensive disorder like preeclampsia. This is compared to women who conceived naturally or through IVF using fresh embryos. The link between frozen embryo transfers and high blood pressure isn't new, but scientists say the research gives a clearer understanding understanding of the risk. The White House is hosting a major conference on nutrition and food. The last time this happened was back when the nutrition label as we know it was born. That's 50 years ago now. And this time the focus is on addressing food insecurity and access to healthy foods. As our Joe St. George shares why this gathering is not your typical White House meeting. Picking up groceries lately hasn't been fun. The price of chicken is up around 10% from last year. Cereal up 16%, eggs up 16% too. Overall, if you bought $100 worth of groceries last year at this time, that same order today would cost $13 or so more. And while inflation is receiving a lot of attention, there is another food issue in our country that isn't dominating the headlines. For years, to save money, many Americans have been buying things like processed meats and cookies, foods that are cheaper than healthy fruits and vegetables. And that brings us here to the White House, where for the first time in 50 years, a major conference is taking place this week to address health, nutrition, and physical activity in our country. It's a very big deal. Like I said, I mean, it's the first time since 1969 that it's happened. Jason Wilson is with the Partnership for a Healthier America. He says the last time the White House did a conference like this, Nixon was president. Policies like SNAP and WIC, food assistance programs for lower income Americans, as well as the National School Lunch Program emerged from it. Nutrition labeling did too. Here in 2022, there is a lot to discuss and the conference starts Wednesday. We're all about trying to get families access to nutrition food. Wilson says his group is looking forward to discussing with federal agencies, companies, and other nonprofits real ways the government can improve the health of communities where buying vegetables can be costly and a challenge, especially in places that lack reliable grocery stores. Government-sponsored delivery programs may be a solution. How do we make sure we unlock the convenience of delivery in underserved communities? There are studies that show that two-thirds of food insecure Americans will go on to develop diabetes. Is this partisan though? Is this going to be another Democrat versus Republican fight? I don't believe so. Other issues on the table include tax incentives to encourage companies to advertise healthier food. Wilson would like to see the federal government actually define what healthy means. Right now the definition varies from store to store. So so this conference could change food labels. Yeah, absolutely. While the conference is only scheduled to last one day, Wilson says the ideas that come out of it will likely be brought forth as legislation in Congress in the years to come. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. The White House is planning to make airline prices more clear. The president will ask travel companies to show you baggage fees, cancellation fees, and other upcharges up front. The proposed rule was announced Monday. It's part of a broader effort from the White House Competition Council, which formed last year to boost competition among businesses and lower prices for consumers. Apple will shift some production of its iPhone 14 to India. It's a break from the norm for Apple. The company announced previous iPhone models in China and will continue to produce most new models in China for the time being. But the shift to India shows the American company is trying to broaden its supply chain amidst rising tensions between the U.S. and Beijing. Your holiday celebration just got even more expensive. Almost 90% of Christmas tree suppliers said they will raise prices by 5% or more this year. That's according to data out Monday. It's in line with overall inflation, which is up more than 8% compared to 2021. 
The 14th annual German Fest celebration is just a couple of weeks away, and this year there's even more to enjoy. So we're giving you a preview of the city's premier celebration of German culture and heritage. That's next on Inside Indy. For many Hoosiers, German heritage comes out loud and proud during the month of October. And what better way to showcase and celebrate their heritage than by participating in the Anthenaeum Foundation's annual German Fest celebration. Our Ray Steele has a preview of what you can expect at this year's event. And that's the whole point of the Athenaeum Foundation and the building proper. Uh, the German immigrants that came to Indianapolis brought art, they brought culture, they brought physical fitness to the city. Uh, and we're here to celebrate that and keep people kind of anchored in the fact that the German immigrants here in Indianapolis played such a pivotal role in the creation of this city over the years. There is a group of folks that seem like they travel around to multiple different German Fests, Oktoberfest during the season, uh, and they race these dogs as if they're like in the NASCAR circuit. So uh, they definitely uh, go head to head uh, in many different locales. How fast is a wiener dog? Have we ever measured the speed of a dachshund? They're pretty quick. It depends on if they stay focused. A lot of them kind of get diverted <laughs> and they kind of go off in all different directions. But for the most part, they, they can usually laser fast pretty quick down the, the course. It's, okay. The idea is you hold a stein in each hand, uh, they will be full of water, uh, but the idea is who can hold those steins the longest without having to drop their hands. Uh, it's a pretty interesting contest that's done many different places. It's the first year that we're doing it. It's its own contest this year. The other contest that we're adding this year is the keg toss. These used to be part of a bigger contest that we would do that was a team kind of activity called the Dursid Games. We've kind of broken up some of these activities so that they're individual uh, and you can, enter the win you can enter them free on site. Uh, but yes, the keg toss, which is kind of that pugilistic, you know, hoisting of the keg and throwing it as far as you can uh, down the street. We're going to be working with GAK, the German American Club. They're going to be doing all of the authentic German food uh, at German Fest this year. So we've got a lineup of just amazing uh, uh, foods that'll be available for everybody. Tickets are on sale now through our website, athenameindy.org. Adult tickets right now are 15, children are 10. They do go up to 25 and 15 at the door. Uh, so we highly encourage you to get those tickets in advance. All proceeds from this event go to the maintenance and upkeep, upkeep of the Athenaeum. So it's a big fundraiser. It's our big fundraiser for the year. Uh, we just like to have a really good time and make sure that we put on a good show for everybody. Thanks for joining us for Inside ND. We'll see you back here for WRTV's News at 11. And you can find our full coverage of Officer Burton's funeral on your live stream.